Hi, welcome to Revival Cycles. I'm Stefan and this is Tech Talk. I wanted to take a minute to talk about wires because wires are not all created equal and if you've worked on bikes for very long you may have run into some butchered project where they've got speaker wire running to the ignition or running to the headlight and that's just not acceptable if you're doing things like a professional. So we've put together a kit that has the right type of wire and a few other components that are going to be really useful as you build a new wire harness. Let's take a second and see what we've got in the bag. A couple of zip ties, two different sizes, they're handy, you know what to do with them, enough said. We've got the heart of the kit, which is this wire, and this is a specific type of wire um, that has a cross-linked polyethylene insulation on it, and that cross-linked insulation has a much higher heat rating and better chemical resistance, so it's impervious to fuel, gasoline, alcohol, um, oil, grease, um, coolant, any of the other chemicals and fluids that you'd find on your motorcycle and it can also handle the higher heats that you'll have underneath the fuel tank and near the engine. We've also got a main fuse holder, the terminals for the main fuse holder. So a few notes about the terminals for the main fuse holder. Um, these are uh, tin plated copper so they've got excellent conduction properties and if you look at these they may not look like much but this is actually a really highly engineered uh, terminal these are the same as what you'd find in modern automotive applications under the hood of any Japanese or American car um, they're made by the same companies that make all those connectors so these are top quality and they've even got little springs and all kinds of design features that are built in so as long as you get them crimped on con correctly these will hold up and last well beyond the life of your bike and then we also have two different sizes of ferrules. These ferrules are used to uh, make terminations for any type of a screw terminal block like you have on the M unit. By using these, you prevent the possibility for a fatigue failure of the wire as it exits the screw terminal. So with that said, that's the rough overview of what these components are. I'd like to show you a couple techniques for how to assemble these correctly. So we'll start with the main fuse holder. Get that out. So this is how you assemble the main fuse holder. I'm gonna pull the cap off. And now the first thing you do is actually insert your wire through the cable seal on the back. Extend that out a little bit so you've got good access. Grab your wire strippers. And now we're gonna trim a little bit more than an eighth inch of insulation off this wire. Then we'll grab one of our terminals and our crimpers. Now these terminals use a different type of crimp than what you may be accustomed to. This is what's known as an open U or a double barrel crimp connector and that requires a special type of crimper. These tools are available on our website but you also may already have these. So what we'll do, insert this into our crimper and then introduce the wire. So there are two crimp regions on these terminals and one is for the, the wire connection to the terminal, the other is for the insulation and that second one is more of a mechanical support so that we don't have a fatigue problem with this connector. So we'll come back in and crimp the second one. Now that we've got those crimped, all you have to do is line up the little tab with the little slot in the housing and pull that to seat it. The other one's the exact same way. Once both terminals are in place, you can install a fuse and then put the cap on, totally sealed, don't have to deal with any moisture issues. Next, I'd like to show you guys how to do a correct termination for the M unit or any other screw terminal um, connection. You can grab one of these smaller wires we've got right here and again, I'm going to strip back some of the insulation. This time we're going to strip back the full length of the ferrule so that we have solid contact all the way through. Because I'm using the smaller wire, I'm also going to use the smaller ferrule. Get one of these out. Now, if you look closely, these ferrules have one end that's got a little bit of a bell mouth. That's serves two functions. One, it makes it easier to, to insert the wire, and second, it also 
gives a little bit of a radius to reduce the stress concentration at the end of the wire so you have less of an issue with fatigue. Now, I'm gonna use a different type of crimper. Again, these tools are available on our website. And this crimper is gonna create a square on this ferrule, and that's gonna secure it to the wire. All I'm gonna do is just squeeze down until it releases the ratchet. And now we've got a great connection. This is an excellent electrical connection. It's got mechanical support, but there's one more thing that we can do to make this even more robust. If we add in a little bit of heat shrink, just a short length of self-sealing heat shrink. We can create a seal so that we don't have any corrosion or um, oxidation. And we can also provide additional mechanical support so there's less issues with fatigue. All right, there we go. That's a great connection. We've got the part that sticks out here that's gonna get inserted into our terminal block, and then this heat shrink helps to distribute the stress so that any bending or vibration that you're gonna find won't be fatiguing the wire right at the, the concentration point where it exits from the ferrule. So following those simple techniques, you're gonna have a great professional installation of this kit. And with all of our products at Revival, we wanna answer all your questions and make sure you get the support you need. Send us an email, Give us a phone call. We're always here to help. Thanks for watching.